Hi, we're Kim and Alexandra. Uh, we're ex-sister-in-laws and we've been in the wedding uh, photography arena for over a decade together. And we realized over the years, there's, there's just a lot of information that our brides and grooms need that just isn't out there. Um, so that's why we decided to do this show. We're gonna, do you realize you're eating ice cream? Do you wanna be eating ice cream? Mm -hmm. Hey, I'm Kim from Kim Chapman Photography. And I'm Alexandra with Alexandra Ch Chapman. <laughs> <laughs> Take 15. Hi, I'm Kim Chapman. Wait. Hi, I'm Kim from. <laughs> Hi, I'm Kim from Kim <laughs> Chapman. <laughs> it's hard. Hey, I'm Kim from Kim Chapman Photography. And I'm Alexandra from Alexander Chapman Photography. And this is Shutter Snap. Oh yeah, I like it like that. There's so many things and we just have to break them down into like these minute pieces because even in just the girls getting ready part of the day, there are so many things to consider. Right. So I guess when I have my conversations with couples, one of the first things I ask is, when will you be arriving at your venue? And since a lot of our couples come from out of state, you know, they're making kind of a vacation out of the whole thing. And oftentimes they arrive days before, if not only just the day before, um, oftentimes the venue will let them start getting set up the day before. Hotel rooms rarely work well <laughs> for, for getting ready, lighting, if you they want They sure that do. Part. I wonder if we, talk to our couples about lighting in a hotel room and you know the hotels know which direction their windows face depending on what time of year it is and the getting ready happens in the morning sometimes the late morning so it should probably be on the south east the east south I side think we're getting way too this is way i okay i know I know, but I sometimes it's like, oh my gosh, you're on the north side of the building with no light coming in a window. I feel um, like, but anyways, okay. for me in a hotel room, just pick it up and you get in there, it's trashed, especially when you have mm. a million bridesmaids in there and it's a small room. That's the thing. Don't have all the bridesmaids in there, have two separate rooms if you have to. It's If you really want good getting ready photos, it, 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 chaos makes it a lot harder. Absolutely. So, I mean, if you have the luxury of being in a hotel with dozens of rooms booked and reserved, really consider where all of the different activities are going to happen. I see a lot of the time when you're doing a wedding, hotels have one area that's going to be like a, like a big room, like a, like a conference room for the girls to get ready in. And then there's usually good light, mm -hmm. but it's the same exact thing with the clutter issue. Yes. So getting is. super organized in the day before when you arrive or the days before, if you have the luxury of being there even earlier, um, really, I encourage people to get completely set up, get all of their stuff out of their bags, all of their makeup set up and know exactly what they need and where it is for every part of the day. Right, because there, there really is no point in having a photographer in there if you've got underwear and bras all over the place, you know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> it's that sounds like a really cool shot. I'm imagining them like all hanging up wildly. Just so much stuff. When people rent houses, it's a lot better because everybody has their own room. The getting ready area usually is very clean. So just you know, keep that in mind. Just try not to have clutter around because it's very difficult to get a good shot, even if you turn into black and white in a hotel, a clutter hotel room. Um, that being said, we really would love it if you if when we arrived, your dress was out of the garment bag. Um, it doesn't really, and it needs to be on the hanger that is going to hang on, hang on for. Uh, the photos of the dress hanging, which, you know, you may or may not want, we'll do it anyway, just down the road, you might think it's nice for an album or whatever. Um, 
So if you have a personalized hanger or just a nicer hanger than a plastic hanger, we want the dress out of the garment bag on the hanger. We want your shoes out of the box near the dress because we never know who's where the bridal shoes are because there are so many different shoes usually right. in a room. Right, um, right. How many times have I taken a picture of beautiful bejeweled high heeled shoes and then those are bridesmaids. I know. So it's very helpful and people don't think of this, but it's very, very helpful. If you do that, then we'll know right away and, and we'll probably move the shoes and take them somewhere else, but at least we know they're your shoes. Um, and yeah, absolutely. The Having them right near the dress for sure. And, and I just ask that they have someone in charge of that. I don't, it doesn't need to be the maid of honor. It doesn't need to be a, like, I don't, it's not important to me who that person is. I recommend they be a tall, strong person. That's what I'm looking for <laughs> in my dress, dress yes. onto a hanger, carrying around. I ask them, I say, look, I'm really scared to handle your dress. I don't want to put one fingerprint on anything ever. I have a friend so, that's done a on a wedding dress, a photographer. I won't <sighs> say his name, but... He must have been he so knows who he is. upsetting. Oh my gosh, oh, for yeah. everyone. He got so, it out though. He got it out. Wow. And right. that's just so, one of my, my worst fears. So I, I ask that they have a big, strong person because we do move the dress. You know, we, we know where the light is. We kind of have some ideas. And as soon as I walk into a space, and not until I walk into a space often do I know what I'm going to do, where, and why. Yeah. But yeah, so make sure that's all set up. We want your jewelry. We want mm. the wedding rings, including the grooms. We want to know if there's any engraving at all. A lot of times I'll be photographing the groom's ring and I realize, oh, there's engraving in here. Good thing I saw this. I'll focus in on that. Right. And make right. sure your rings are cleaned before they arrive. And I'm going to... Oh, you have a good recipe for that, don't I you? I have a recipe. Is that what you call it? Will recipe. you put that in the show notes? I will. I'm going to put it in the show notes. It's just a homemade ring cleaning um, solution. That, that That's the mm. word I was looking for. So, And then also something I see is little tiny hairs, strings, where the stone meets the, the metal. All the time. And so tweezers even to mm -hmm. really clean that engagement ring especially, um, but all of the rings of tiny little hairs that are, are almost invisible until we get so close with those macro lenses. It's, it's really hard to Photoshop out a dirty ring. Um, but also, so your jewelry, your, you know, like hair pieces, your necklaces, earrings, any heirlooms that you might have, handkerchiefs, um, we want that all together on a table. It's very helpful. So we don't have to search around for that. Right. Um, or in a box or in a bag and not as much as possible unpackaged. Each one of those things just. Especially the earrings. You know, I mean, I, I, I don't like to pull apart the earrings off the thing. And I don't want my hands on their right. earring backings. Right. Um, right. But it, it's just, you know, if this doesn't happen, it's, it's, it's okay. This is just. Best I mean, usually, scenario. historically, it hasn't happened. And it's only now in our years, they don't years know. of experience. Of course, they don't know. How would they know? So I'm just really excited that we get to have this time together and get to share all of our knowledge. Yeah, and it, and it will give us more time to photograph the people. Because we when we first arrive in the getting ready location, we do these little details to get those out of the way. Um, but if we have to be searching for jewelry and rings and shoes and stuff like that it just kind of eats into our time our precious absolutely. time absolutely and that's what I tell my couples you know that's the thing it's precious time on wedding day for them and my time is expensive and so I'm happy to do whatever you if you want me to put my cameras down and carry your purse for you I'll do it but I have these conversations with them on the front end reminding them that they hired me for a reason and let's figure out together if there's another person before this day even comes who might be better to ask. Mm -hmm. um, but there is one final really important consideration with the rings, isn't there? 
Yes, because we have to figure out who to hand them to afterwards. And one of those rings need, or both of those rings need to get back to the groomsmen. Or, or not, you know, and that's something to figure out in this conversation that we're having, you know, sometimes it's a bridesmaid, maybe who's going to give the couple those rings to then place on each other's hands. And so you know, I, I, I was just gonna say, I had a, a groomsman hover over me one time when I was taking pictures of the rings. He was the person responsible for the rings. He was not going to let them out of his sight, which, you know, I commend because I could just be a ax murder and be, I know, right? I just be leaving and going and pawning off those rings you never know I mean it seems funny it's like but I've actually, got one job to do I'm completely focused on this one job I can't mess this up did, and that's how I feel all around. Right. as soon as I'm that's done photographing those rings I want to pass them off because as expensive as the whole day is that's generally the very most expensive part yes then so oftentimes when we're done photographing the rings, it's like, hello, excuse me, hello, hello. <laughs> and then you just end up putting them down somewhere. It's so true. And I I, and so I start true. on my oh. next thing. I don't they they're am I gonna remember where I put it? Probably, but I don't know. Yeah, Pretty I need to go right back in the other container with all the other details, but oh my gosh, seriously. So <laughs> yes, when I come into the getting ready area I want to already have a picture of the bride on my phone so I know which one she is oh my gosh that took years right. of work to before I started requesting a photograph are you the bride are you the bride are you the bride now I know who the bride is when I walk in See now and I want her to introduce me to the person who's going to be the person who's responsible for the rings as soon as I'm done with them so I can look up see that person deliver and we would love for you to bring two invitations because a lot of times if you have fancy invitation suites, there's a front and a back that we kind of want all in the same shot. Um, and a lot of times I will take this, we both will take this, the uh, invitations home and photograph them in the studio um, with a nice backdrop. And we can really, really play around with the arrangement because invitations are actually really hard to style um again they're a really important memory and well it's just like every other thing on a wedding day so much thought goes into every single item that's a part of your wedding day i want to treat it with the most respect deference and uh create you know that thematic line throughout all of my images for them yeah again those loose flowers that we might be able to get from, from the because honestly to be perfectly honest i've stolen little sprigs of flowers off of, off of this not out of the bouquet i would never do that out of the no, pieces no. off of tables but then i try to put definitely them back. yes um yeah, yeah. so and we're not as good at putting them back as the florist is for sure i've mm -hmm. done that too yeah, so bring two invitations. That's really all we really need. And, and we'll probably end up taking those home. Um, you might get an email from us to have them mailed to us. Because that, that yeah. will actually save a lot of time in the getting ready area. I've told my couples about the invitations and wanting to have two. And they bring me two, but they don't bring the envelopes, which are a really important part mm -hmm. of Especially capturing. Especially if they're lined. Um, and and I would say, honestly... Details. For the people who recognize the importance of these detail shots, that's great. But I would say almost even more than them, the people who say these shots aren't important to me and I don't want them. I'm not that sentimental. They're not, these things are not that important to me. I would say they're even, it's even more important that we capture them because those are the people who are going to chuck those things out. They're not going to have a hard copy of their invitation that they save. And you just can't believe how 10 year at your 10 year anniversary, your 20 year anniversary, how meaningful it is, yeah. how much emotion it brings in to see that object again. Yeah. And you do want to reminisce years and years later. You do want to reminisce. Yes, and do. Anyway, um, I, can we move on to dresses? Dresses. Okay. Um, 
So when it, when it's time to put on your dress, you know, obviously it's going to be hung up somewhere because we photographed it. Um, the person that is going to help you get into that dress, make sure you practice with that person and time it. Um, also, if you have buttons, and this is really, really important, make sure you bring a crochet hook to to wrap the that elastic part over the over the button. Because it's a time suck if you don't have a crochet hook. Uh, it really is a time suck. Uh, I I'm gonna say 99% of my couples don't have this tool, and I don't know if it's the, absolutely. I'm, I am sure. I'm pretty sure the the dress shop has told them to bring it. And I'm pretty sure the dress shop they have. uses it. Yeah. But they just don't. They have told them. So a lot of times I'll take a bobby pin and I'm like, well, maybe this will work. And um, whoever's buttoning your dress, you might th think about how you want them to appear in that photograph. Do you want her to be in her dress, her, her gown? Do you want her to be in the robes that perhaps everyone's wearing in the getting ready time how do you want her to appear in those pictures and something I see all the time is um watches and elastic hair bands on the wrist of the person mm -hmm. and I don't see it until I'm editing I know. also it's that same person was asking. needs to practice bustling in that dress sometimes that bustling a dress is super easy and sometimes it's not and everybody thinks oh I'll, I'll be able to do that no that's also a time suck if, and, and, and trust me, you're, when you have that dress bustled, it's right before you're getting introduced into the reception usually, and you, you've got to get it done quickly. So have that same person that's buttoning up the back of your dress um, be the bustler. And also one little note, the mother of the bride oftentimes wants to be in the photos of the getting ready shots, and she wants to be the one buttoning up the back of the dress as would I. I think that it's a it's a nice special shot. But realistically, mothers of the bride, bring your reading glasses because <laughs> you're not going to be able to see those buttons. Again, 90% of the time they have to have somebody else do it. Unless they've thought to or bring their glasses or have they don't someone want their else glasses. do it. And mom pops in and puts her hands on here and puts her hands on in a very beautiful, delicate way where they're not claws and shows off her manicure beautifully um also scissors make sure you bring scissors to cut the i'm gonna say nine times out of ten the tags are still on the dresses um on the all the dresses Separate. i mean even if you've already taken the tags off still bring the scissors because you might want to cut off the, yeah. the the hanging straps the what are they is there a name for those they're hanger straps Hanger straps. And I, I guess pretty much 100% of the time, nine times out of 10, they want to cut those off because they, they they show half the time. They do. Even if you stuff them down really well, for you, everyone's worn these things before. So you know, even when they're stuffed down really well, they pop back out. They pop and, back out and they bother you. I don't, they bother me. I don't like them at all. I don't like them either. And if they don't pop back out, you can still see them underneath the clothes off, almost yeah. always. Um, but scissors, crochet hook. Um, Double-sided tape. Uh, what? Hmm? Double-sided tape. Double-sided tape. Also a needle and thread is needed. I'm going to say 50% of the time. Which means you should bring it 100% of the time. Yes, yeah. Um, what else do I have? Uh, tied to go, you you just never know if something's, don't have red wine. And if you that. bring tied to go, you won't have to use it. <laughs> that's but that's if right. If you don't bring tied to go. You will have to use it. Murphy's Law. Don't have red wine in your getting ready suite, please. Have If you're gonna have wine or champagne, have white wine or or rosé. No, don't have rosé. <laughs> um, and the other thing is too, a lot of times the bride wants a bathrobe shot. So obviously, you know, or whatever they're wearing for lounge wear. Right. What, um, a lot of times class. they're matching and cute. Um, but it needs to be, that photo needs to be taken before the bride gets into her dress. 
but it also has to be taken after the last girl's out of hair and makeup. Um, so it's a tricky one. I think we need to address hair and makeup because um, I don't know. Uh, I, I really think that if you want to be done with hair and makeup with everybody, by the time you're putting your dress on, which let's just say is two o'clock, you're going to put your dress on, you want all hair and makeup done. I would honestly tell the hair and makeup, you want everything done by one o'clock. Um, it seems, and I, and I want to be careful how I say this, but because I love all the hair and makeup artists. I mean, they're a huge part of the day. Are you kidding me? They make my photos look better. People are late to sit in the chair. Right. People start People talking change their to minds. You. They say, oh, we talked about this, but now I want that. Yeah. Um, and talking, conversations eats into the time. And those conversations add up and add up and add up. And before you know it, she's a half yes, hour especially late. when you have a big wedding party. Yeah. So I would do, if you want hair and makeup done by two, tell them to be done by one. Yeah. No, I, I've been doing this since 2003. That's what you need to do. It just, you know, even if the person's super organized, it doesn't matter. People are late a lot. But that's so true. That's you know, really shout out to the hair and makeup artists. They don't get enough credit, but they really, really work hard. They make it. And a lot of the time, and they, they make everybody look amazing, which, I, like I said earlier, make their sh shots look, it makes it so much easier for us. But a lot of times these days, because of first looks, first looks weren't in a few years back but because of first looks jessica candage my old go-to makeup artist um was leaving actually the one i use now says the same thing leaving their house at three in the morning to drive to a venue in order to start the wedding party early enough to get done by first look which we do four hours before, right, the, before ceremony. the ceremony we think we get there early half the time. So hats off. Wow. And they're under a lot of pressure. I, I've seen, I saw one makeup artist. Um, she wasn't able to finish the bride's hair. And the bride, you know, she wanted to get to her ceremony on time. And just was like, well, I still need to take pins out. And, and oh, no, no, I'll just keep it like this. And it, I don't know. That shouldn't happen. Wow. And that's another thing that I've been recommending to um, my brides is really, it used to be historically relevant, probably with the, without, when you didn't have first looks before the first look popularity, um, that the bride would have her hair and makeup finished last. And that was certainly to keep her face fresh for the also moment that she walked down the aisle. So the makeup, hair and makeup would be done and she'd walk down the aisle. And that was how it was always organized. But I'm telling them, I would seriously consider being, if not in the middle, then on the front end of finished. And then that way you can have your hair and makeup touched up while the hair and makeup is still there. I love it if we can all go out together for a first look, um, just me and the couple. And then if she wants to dip back in and have her hair and makeup touched up before whatever comes next, whether it's more first look with family or wedding party, I mean, or if it's the ceremony. And I think if the hair and makeup artists listen to this and they hear us say, we don't need to photograph the bride without any makeup on. They don't like those photos. We just need sort of the touch up at the end. So have them all done, then have them sit back in the chair and we'll photograph the touch up. That's really all you need. Well, I think... I think that by talking to our couples in advance, I'm hoping that this will become less of an issue for us because frankly, people don't want pictures of themselves actually having their hair and makeup done. So I think well, when we no say getting ready pictures. time, no, they don't want to have pictures of them without having their makeup on yet. So they, they do, but they don't. Yeah, it's it's sort of misleading to call it getting ready time. They think that's what we're, they're imagining. I think that's what we're doing. Um, but frankly, the pictures of the bride and her bridesmaids getting their hair and makeup done is really like, I like to get a picture from behind um, the bride looking in a beautiful mirror, ideally. Mm -hmm. 
and you know holding a lipstick tube near her mouth not so it's in front of her mouth hiding her I like mouth that shot too. but like oh I'm about to put put it on or I've got a brush in my hand and I'm going to hold it up to my face just barely um and that's our hair and makeup shot yeah it just sort of touch up type photos is really all you want sure um I've had a few brides that don't usually wear makeup and they don't yeah. want any makeup and yeah. I completely understand that but remember you're going to be in this beautiful princess gown number one um number number two photography washes you out so even if you have just mascara on it's going to wash you out you and it's, it's hard because you want to have great photos, but you also want to look great in real life. So, and if you mm. don't wear makeup at all. It does feel weird. It does, but I, I highly encourage it. And I highly encourage false lashes. Some people have never. You know me, I'm encouraging the men all to have their makeup done. So I'm, and I'm, I'm not, I'm terrible because I also don't wear makeup and I also am only wearing a tiny bit of mascara right now but I have worn makeup before and well, it makes better you, in photos. Yeah, and when you're photographed, it really, those lashes really make your eyes pop. The guy should have them too. Everyone should have lashes. And, and it's not to say that I, I do like, like I do a lot of senior pictures and I do like it when the, some of the girls don't wear makeup at all and they're, it's, it's fine. But when you have a beautiful gown on, it doesn't match. It just doesn't match. We don't want you to look like your everyday self. This is a special day. Why not get a little bit glammed up? You don't have to overdo right. it. But a lot of times right. it's the groom. They don't like want them in makeup. But that's true. You know what? They're not going to notice. Get have a little natural makeup. They won't. <laughs> they makeup won't. artists are so talented that we work yeah. with. They are so talented. Um, if you're nervous, have them do your makeup the week before in advance, you know, so you yeah. can see it and take a bunch of pictures with your phone and see how it looks. And I think that would really calm your nerves a lot. Um, especially like practice crying with that makeup on that the makeup artist is going to apply and see that it really doesn't mess your makeup up. Yeah. Do a trial, but trials are, are hard because you don't have that beautiful gown on. I mean, I think sometimes they do. That's true, you. huh? Yeah, that, that doesn't match. And you, and with your everyday clothes and your jeans, it's oh my gosh, off. that's so true, Kim. Mm -hmm. Um, and of course, we photograph we photograph um the moments as they unfold. At the same time, we're trying to of do course. all these details, of course, um, which are fun. Some of the more fun photos of the day, I think. Um, always make sure you have food. Brides a lot oftentimes forget to eat. Have food in that room. Um, also, and bottles of water. Um, I actually have water on me in a backpack, and oftentimes, especially in the middle of the summer when it's really hot and humid, I'll have extra waters to give the bride and groom. If you want, if you want to drink alcohol, that's up to you. But I would not have more than one drink. I've, I've, I've seen a few horror stories um and nerves get the best of you i i get that but seriously you know, think, about well hmm? think about that well in advance think about that in advance certainly yeah. a lot of people um drink a lot regularly and if that's you great you're fine it's fun, but if but you don't normally drink be careful because people yeah. are going to be pressing drinks into your hand, especially during the getting ready time. And you're, you can't imagine how nervous you are. And people tell you help. to drink when you're nervous. Actually, hope you, hopefully you won't be nervous. You plan ahead of time. Um, just have fun, just have fun. It's just another day, really. You go up and say, I do. And then you go to a party. It's, and you look nice, but honestly, the minute you start walking down the aisle, you'll be fine. It's just kind of the nerves leading up to that moment, but it's all good. It all works out. And I think a lot of it is like, is, is excitement. And it's so interesting how similar 
anxiety and excitement feel Ooh, in your body. Good point. It actually can be confusing. And so I, that's something I like to talk about in the planning stage and then the day of as well is to say, you're so excited and just to like help them redirect and all that energy into understanding how it is. It's really excitement. Mm -hmm. You've been planning this for years sometimes and it's not anxiety. You're not afraid. It really is. You're really excited. You're going to grill get married and you know so drink a lot of water and eat eat healthy um have your champagne have your toast and that's another thing if you do a toast make sure you have nice champagne glasses um mm. they don't have to be personalized yes, or anything that. like that but we've got a couple of really good ideas for shots for for toasts and you, there's you don't want a plastic cup if you can help it. again this, these, there are no rules. You do whatever you want. We're really good at going with the flow, but this just is very helpful in photographs. We don't expect you well, to do all of these things. We don't expect- Or any of them, forget. frankly. Hmm? But it, it, I like just helping people plan and think about them because if someone says, yeah, no, I love red solo cups. They're all I drink of. They're sort of like my thing. Then I definitely want to get a picture of you and your- thing whatever that is but I don't want you to accidentally those solo they're called it's like a solo brand you know the red plastic cups that are the disposable ones mm -hmm. yeah it's I've never heard someone say that's their thing but if it um, is it is but if it is that's great that's fine uh you're going to enjoy having that memory but you might not enjoy it as much if it's not your thing yeah um, and another thing, so when everybody's all dressed, you've done your toasts, all that, we need to build in time for gifts. Um, if you have, and, and dad first looks. Yeah. I've seen, um, I've seen brides have a first look with the groomsmen or their whole wedding party. That de designated person that has that role needs to go get your dad or whoever you're doing the first look with and we'll coordinate that. Um, if you have gifts, make sure the, if you only have one photographer, make sure that photographer is back for your gifts. If you have two photographers, it's usually not an issue. Um, and your bridesmaid right. gifts, you, they kind of want to be, again, there are no rules, but it, it, it's kind of better looking if they're all dressed and opening their gifts. A lot of times they have yeah, bridesmaids bags. gifts. I kind of like it if they're in their Bathrooms. cute, like matching, getting ready outfit. Yeah, yeah. But that's again, true. that's up. To yeah. you. that's completely up to you. But you got to build that into it the is. timeline. Um, and, build and it in the timeline. Plus, I want to take pictures of what those gifts are in another styled shoot, potentially. Yeah, yeah. If they're and you know itself, beautiful, swaggy, right. details. And, and meanwhile, again. We are getting the moments as they unfold here. We're getting a lot of people. I'm going to say 95% people shots, but, and those are easy. We just, we just, um, that's more of a photojournalist approach. The, it's just these details that we need set up. And we need those. Right, and we need right. Yes. And we need to build into the timeline, the first look and that kind of thing. Um, that's good to mention because it doesn't sound, I can imagine a person thinking, when are you taking candids of us? And the answer is like you just said, all the time, it's that part comes time. really naturally, yeah. both to this us the and, stuff and to the moment. Mm -hmm. And even if you say, oh, I don't care about those detail shots, I'm probably going to do them anyway. Well, I mean, especially if you have beautiful details. If it's a micro wedding, it's just an elopement. No, of course not. We're just going to go with the flow outside or whatever. Um, if it's an older couple, a lot of times I don't. Um, I just had a, um, I photographed a couple, I think they were late seventies, early eighties, maybe it was an adorable wedding. Aww. I didn't do all that kind of stuff. They didn't have, she didn't have a getting ready right room with her bridesmaids and that kind of thing. For sure. And the group, <laughs> And the groom forgot the rings. He had to drive, get in his car and drive all the way to his house 40 minutes away to go get the ring. Oh my gosh. And, and that's back. another thing. That's terrible. Why was the groom doing that job? No, well, figure out who your helpers are before the day. He was and the 
well, he, they probably, he probably had children who were 60 years old who could have helped him <laughs> or grandchildren, you know what I mean? Like, do not be doing chores on your wedding day. That is for other people yeah, to do. planning right. how, how no matter what your happen. age. It doesn't matter. Absolutely. You're not driving to your house. <laughs> I know, what? Um, gosh, I think we've covered everything. Susan. What? Is it possible? Um, um, yeah, I mean, for now. Oh, one more thing. All right. A lot of times, in fact, most of the time, brides ask me, well, can we just do some photos of my family during the getting ready portion of the day? We knock those and portraits out. That's actually complicated. <laughs> um, we can't, we can in the room and, uh, and oftentimes it's a cluttered room or, or not. Maybe it's a house and we can go out on the porch. Regardless, it's indoors. Yeah, unless you're comfortable going out on the grounds and risking the guests seeing you and the bride and groom and all the groomsmen seeing you. Um, sometimes we can coordinate. Okay, groomsmen and grooms, stay in your room. The girls are going to go out. And we can do that. But again, you need to build that a little bit more into your timeline. Um, and you have to like prepare and imagine how how you're really going to feel about that. Because I have a lot of people who say they want to do that. And then the day and comes. Then they don't they say, do it on the day. I though. can't do that. Someone's going rushing. to see me. Yeah. Um, but if we do it in the room, that's fine. But we don't think that those are the photos. We need to do them again outdoors when we do the family, when we do the wedding party. So it matches. So you have the ocean in the background or whatever, wherever we are in the beautiful location outside. We can't just count the mother-daughter photos. Oh, yeah, we've done those in the messy room. We have to do them again anyway. So, I mean, it's fun to do them, just do some fun shots, but that, that, that doesn't, um, I, I guess what I'm trying to say is the getting ready photo, especially when we go to the groomsmen, but we'll talk about that later. They're just getting ready photos. You don't need to be ready for us to do portraits. They're just getting ready photos. And a lot of times when I do, go to the groom's room, they think they need to be all ready and it's portraits, it, it's miscommunication. So anyway, the, the photos that we do in the bridal suite are not formal photos. They're just fun photos. We need to do the formal photos. I say formal. We're not really formal, but out in the beautiful locations. Okay, well, thanks for joining us, you guys. I hope you learned a lot. Um, we certainly have a lot to talk about. Um, Thoroughly. Yeah. And we'll, we'll put a lot of these notes in our show notes and our descriptions links and um you know those ring cleaning instructions that's right so thanks for joining us until next time thanks for coming to shutter snacks see you soon bye like 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 it like that